Hey, this is Dr. Farhan Kawaja. In this talk, I want to discuss how visual input is converted into the representation of signals in the visual cortex in the back of the brain. So essentially what happens is when you look at an object and light enters the retina, those signals travel from retinal cells to the back of the brain, which is the visual cortex or V1. Now, let's kind of break this down before we talk about what happens in V1. When light enters the cornea and travels to the back in retinal cells, there are many different types of cells in the retina. And the first cell that is hit by this photon or this, this particle of light is the photoreceptor. It receives that photon. There are two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. Rods are associated with black, cones are associated with color, okay? So when you see color, cones are the ones that are mostly representing as well as processing those signals. And when you are in darkness, when you're standing in dark or, or in the middle of the night, you're walking around, that is when your rods are processing the visual input. And then eventually, the retinal ganglion cells are the ones that receive this information, which process uh, this information and relay it to the visual cortex in the back of the brain. So once the signals travel to the back of the brain, to, to V1, that is where different parts of the visual scene are dissected and processed. So as I'm looking at this camera, or as you are looking around where you're sitting, you will see a complex array of information in your, in your environment. You will see circles, you will see squares, you will see corners, you will see light, you will see dark. The way it works is V1 processes the edges of the visual environment. So for example, if you see a corner of your laptop or if you see a camera, you see different things which have edges, V1 has neurons that are selective for specific orientations of lines. So for example, if a V1 cell let's say is selective or prefers a horizontal line. So if I was recording from a brain of, of a human or an animal uh, and I was waving in front of that animal a, a line or a bar, the cell would essentially fire when this line hits the receptive field of that cell. The receptive field is the visual location which that cell corresponds to. So for example, let's say the visual location is here, and this is the orientation that the cell prefers. So if I was to move the bar like this, it would go brrr, 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 brrr. It is doing that because, and, and this brrr sound is the action potential or the spiking activity of this cell. It is when the cell is active. We know that this type of activity is going on in V1, which is selective for the orientation of edges, okay? Now, V1 is more complex. V1 also has cells that prefer the direction of edges. So those are known as end stop cells. They need, they're called end stop cells because they respond to corners of edges. You will only be able to tell where an edge is going, which direction it's going in, when you can see its corner. Because obviously, if you can't see its corner, let's say you can see the edge, if it's going a certain way, you're, because, it's, because of the aperture problem, because the line is lying above an aperture, you will not be able to know where exactly the true direction of that line is. So end stop cells or direction selective cells in V1, in the primary visual cortex, are selective for those corners and are able to actually detect the direction of these edges. So that is the difference between the simple cells as well as the more complex cells or the end stop cells of the primary visual cortex. This is Dr. Farhan Kawaja. Thank you for listening.